everybody. So I changed my mind. Last we talked, I mentioned that I was going to cut this inletting by hand on the milling machine, but I decided to copy it after all. And uh, so as usual, it was a bit of a challenge getting it jigged up in the machine gate. But I'm pretty happy with where it's at. And there's uh, inletting that's been cut in the factory stock that's not actually required of the action. So I'm thinking maybe this stock is used for different variants of the gun or some other gun. Or uh, maybe it was just kind of poor engineering in that maybe it was uh, copy and paste uh, from a different action uh, when they created the file to cut it for this one. Well, in any case, I am not going to cut out the areas that don't need to be cut out and thereby make this area stronger, flatter, and better inside. So anyway, I'll turn this on when interesting things are happening, but i got to get the vacuum fired up. I uh, filled the inletting from this mystery firearm stock with Bondo and slathered lots of extra along the sides. Changed the angle of the forearm because uh, it, the stock actually had a little bit of an angle, a little bit uh, drop angle that I didn't want. So I changed the angle of the forearm so that the butt stock is uh, straight to it with about, I think it's going to end up with a quarter, maybe three eighths inch drop. I'm, I'm shooting for a quarter. I'll turn it back on in a minute. I gotta get those safety gear back on.
Okay, this is looking good. Uh, I got to do this well yet that uh, I don't think you can see. That's uh, because of the transition from the round to the flat. I think I'll go ahead and cut the round first before I cut that well out. And the back part of this inletting that uh, the factory overcut. Uh, I have a plan on how to deal with that. I'm thinking about putting a piece of aluminum in on the flat section that is at the right height and set the uh, router bit to be at that, at the wood's height, if you get what I mean. That's my idea. So anyway, I'm going to work on cutting a piece of metal for that and getting that jigged up and really looking forward to getting the round bit in there and cutting this round and it won't take very long to get this done. It, I did probably take three hours um, getting it jigged up into the machine. That's always tricky. Um, I uh, and then I hot melt glued this block in, and it didn't sur the glue didn't survive, so I have it clamped in place because I filled the cavity with hot melt glue. It it fits very snugly. It just didn't adhere. Uh, normally I would have epoxied it in and then ground it out afterwards, and I thought about doing that, but. Uh, I was kind of thinking more about speed. I didn't want to wake six or seven hours for the epoxy to cure, or speed it up with a heat gun and hurt the wood. So I just used hot milk glue. I think it'll be just fine. Because uh, all I got to do is just copy this and copy this and then flip it upside down and cut out the trigger guard opening and turn it sideways and cut the uh, profile of the bottom. And we'll see how it goes. I'll check back in with you. Well, it turns out I had a scrap piece of plywood that uh, fits in there just fine. So I jigged it up like this. So the stylus is on the wood and the router is on the, the normal level. And so I'm just going to drop this in here on top of the inletting that is at the correct depth and bridge over the two deep, the inletting that's too deep. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I had to change out to a longer router bit to accommodate that difference. And luckily, it just fits. I gotta adjust my squareness here. Just a little bit. The head tilts on this machine.
I just touched the side there when I went in initially, but that's fine. I can fill that. This is just creating a master. I will very likely glass bed the action in here anyway to make sure I have a perfect uh, copy of the inlet into copy. Well, that's a lot of copies. All right, let me get the vacuum. tripod in the way I have to walk the long way around. So that turned out absolutely perfect. We have a floor that is the same height all the way around. That is super duper. Fantastic. Couldn't be better. And we got that uh, for the safety. That cut out cut nicely. And there's a little section here that, uh, oh, it must be from the transition of the two different bits. Huh. Let me try running down the sides and clean that up a little bit. back to the other bit before I cause a screw up. But right now, I'd say, yeah, it's perfect. It looks great. Okay, so I gotta change out the bit. Uh, actually, I guess at this point I'll cut the round. And then I'll go back to this bit to cut this uh, well with, to smooth the transition between the round and the square. Uh, and I'm gonna run out of forearm up here. I'm gonna have to put some more Bondo on this, I think. Um, cutting that, and I haven't decided if I wanna do that now or later, because I can only cut the round up to the end here where my block of wood is. So I'm going to finish the rest of it, and then this is longer than the factory stock. So I'll finish that on the milling machine later, and at some point I'll have to build this up some more. But this is looking really super cool. Let me zoom in here. I'll tilt this up for you. Maybe. Get the camera to focus. Yep. There it is. Okay, turn this back on in a bit.
I had a chip get in one of the carriage wheels. Machine tilted back so much. Oh, machine head. Now I can cut the round. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, quick update here on the progress. Uh, cut the inletting, it came out great. Uh, I've been working on shaping the outside shape a little bit. You see I added some wood here on the bottom because the this stock I'm using to create a master from was too skinny. And worked on the trigger opening. Still have more work to do here. I'm shaping a bit of a curve. Whoops, uh, right like that. It's not quite there yet. Uh, now I'm also working on the uh, cheek piece and rollover. I uh, laid this on my drawing. Uh, cut a piece of wood that needed that this needed to extend up to give me the angle and the height that I wanted. And uh, glued it on with Mondo. And now I've uh, sketched out a uh, cheek piece and a rollover. Traced it onto a piece of mylar that I will wax. I tape onto the top here and uh, bondo to create a cheek piece and the same thing with the rollover. Got a little piece of uh, mylar here for the rollover and generate that also. So I'll turn the camera back on once I've got that uh, done.